In this recording, we will refactor the basic dice game into a model view controller based architecture. For this to become a little bit more interesting, we have actually changed the requirements slightly. So when you play the game, you can opt to play again or quit. This means that the play class has become slightly more complicated since, since it has to handle some input also. Uh, on top of this, I renamed the have fun operation to play game as it, this maps better to the actual requirement. The implementation should reflect the modules of the architecture. And to do so, we create three packages, the model, the view and the controller. Just as before, we can probably guess that the dice game and the die classes should be in the model. And let's put the player in the controller. and the app in the controller. So the reason for putting the player in the controller is that it has the name of the actual user, the actor in the system. It's the player. However, if we look at the code in the controller, we can see that it has a lot of stuff to do with uh, the user interface. So this currently is kind of like a mixed class and we don't have anything in the view. So basically our work here now is to extract the view stuff from the player so that the player class becomes a clean controller class and we get a nice uh, view class. So looking at the implementation here, we can see that this is uh, outputting using system out and inputting using system in. That is some kind of console user interface. So I let's create that. And again, looking at the, the methods here, we can maybe see that, well, this whole get input character should be probably just moved to this new class instead. And then we also have some output and basically we have uh, four types of output here. The uh, welcome message, we have the uh, winning message, the losing message and the prompt to play again. So let's add those as functions in the view instead.
let's just put this as public for now. So we now have the messages and we can simply add a view. Let's do it like this then. Console UI A UI and we need to import it. And first we show welcome message. If we win, we show show winning message. If we lose, we show losing message and then prompt for the quit message. And then we read from the UI and get the input character. And we need to change this one also to public. And the application now also need to create the actual view that the controller should use. And we need to import it. Basically, the game should uh, now work exactly as it did before, but we have divided the uh, player class into the controller responsibility and the view responsibility. Seems to be working. So in this quick refactoring, we did uh, one quite large mistake here. And it has to do with this uh, quitting message. So this is low level input and we also have this magic constant here. So this uh, is not a good thing because it means if we want to change the character that we want to use to quit, then we need to change in two different places. And to make things worse, this is also located in two different modules, two different packages in this architecture. So. We need to change here and we also need to change it in the prompt text here. And this is absolutely not a good thing. It would be much better if this console uh, UI class actually returned here what the user wanted to do. So uh, let's do that. And since it's basically a uh, quit or not thing, we can just add uh, do this with a simple boolean. can hide the get input character inside of this class and not have it displayed publicly publicly and also this simply becomes while we don't want to quit we should loop why isn't it reacting to that Here 
we go. Uh, save it. And we save it. And now we have removed the bad uh, spread con constant that was present in two different parts of the system. And we can see that if we change here, it's easy to remember to also change this to something else. So that's exactly what we want. We want things to be encapsulated and uh, things to be as tightly uh, cohesive as possible. And if we run this, everything should work exactly as before. So now we can take a look at a class diagram and see what has actually happened there. So I created a new diagram here and we still have the model package just as before. with the dice game and the die. And we have a view package. And we have this new package controller Inside that package, we have the console UI class. And what has happened is that actually our, of course I did it in the wrong way. We have the console UI class in the view and the player has moved into the controller and the app is also in the controller. And since the app creates a console UI object, we need to add a dependency from app to the console UI. And also the player uses the console UI so we can add a dependency to that. And now we can see that everything inside the controller depends on everything inside the view. So we can actually make these a little bit uh, easier to read by uh, removing them and instead draw the dependency from the package to, uh, from the controller package to the view package. These dependencies between different packages are not strictly defined what they mean. So I usually have the uh, underlying notion that now everything inside of this package is dependent on everything inside that package. Uh, in some uh, circumstances, you have a looser definition where uh, everything inside a controller package may depend on the view package. But uh, for this course, we will keep kind of like these strict rules for adding dependencies between packages. Uh, when doing uh, class diagrams. Uh, that's for example why I won't add uh, a dependency from uh, the controller package to the model package because uh, everything inside the controller package does not depend on everything inside the dice game uh, the model package. We can however see that both the player and the app actually depend on the dice game so we can make a dependency like this instead. And we couldn't do that in GenMyModel, so we seem to be... Uh, seem to need to... Well, that wasn't that nice. So it will look nicer if we have it like that, apparently, and well, something like this then. So if you don't really know how to treat dependencies by, between the packages, you can always just use the dependencies between the classes instead, and then you will have all of the details. But uh, you can save some 
and lines in this way. Just as long as you know what you're doing. So it seems like again my model did not really want to change uh, the player and the app to the view even though I put them in the controller. Maybe the, you need to do it in uh, the tree browser instead, yes. So it seems. So we have restructured the dice game into a model view controller architecture and in our case we have actually managed to keep the view from using or depending on anything inside a model. This is uh, probably because the dice game is really really simple and uh, it actually does not visualize anything regarding the model, uh, at least not at this point.